You're listening to the REI Marketing Nerds Podcast, the leading resource for real estate investors who want to dominate their market online. Dan Barrett is the founder of AdWords Nerds, a high-tech digital agency focusing exclusively on helping real estate investors like you get more leads and deals online, outsmart your competition, and live a freer, more awesome life. And now, your host, Dan Barrett. All right, hello everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the REI Marketing Nerds Podcast. As always, Daniel Barrett here from AdWords Nerds. This week, we've got a really good one. This week's actually an interview. I know, <laughs> getting into the whole interview space. We'll definitely be back to our usual format of me talking a bunch of gibberish about marketing at you soon. But this week, I could not pass up the opportunity to interview Dan Schwartz. If you don't know Dan Schwartz, he is the CEO and uh, kind of mastermind behind Investor Fuse, which is a really incredible program. It kind of manages the relationship between your seller leads and, uh, and you and uh, can do all kinds of really amazing things, automate lots of processes, do all sorts of wild marketing things. It's a really, really cool tool. So I get into this whole process with Dan, how he started uh, in investing, doing wholesaling. We talk about what brought Investor Fuse into the world, why he decided that was gonna be the thing that he wanted to focus his time on. We talk about what's new with Investor Fuse 2.0, what that is, what's going on. We also talk about a lot of really universal things, like Dan's phrase here, we are in an age of systems in investing and what that means and how you can use that in order to improve your own business. We talk about how you can make more money and get more deals from the exact same amount of leads just by automating a lot of your follow-up. And we talk about some of the follow-up tactics that the best investors in the world are using right now. This is a value-packed amazing interview. And by the way, just outside of that, Dan is a fascinating guy, a really, really interesting guy. One of these people that's incredible at uh, analyzing his own life, figuring out where the highest points of impact are going to be, and then optimizing everything he does around that. He's one of my favorite people in the real estate investing community, and I can't wait for you to hear this interview. So check it out. And uh, I will uh, be back at the end of the episode here. So without any further ado, here is my interview with Dan Schwartz from InvestorFuse. All right, everybody. Uh, Dan Barrett here, as always. And I'm here with Daniel Schwartz from... Now, okay. So when you when you like introduce yourself, do you say like, I am Dan Schwartz from InvestorFuse? Like, how do you... Like, when you meet people at parties, how do you introduce yourself? And what you do? Because I, I introduce like, myself like a medieval lord, <laughs> Daniel Schwartz of the Schwartz family of Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, Daniel of Schwartz. <laughs> Daniel uh, of Schwartz. Me. Day <laughs> Baltimore. Baron Schwartz. <laughs> you know, I like uh, you know like Dan Schwartz. Oh, of the New York Schwartzes. I see how it is. That's cool. <laughs> uh, well, so t- so for people who don't know who you are, because like. I know who you are, and I think we, we have a long history together, but mm-hmm. I'm not sure how much of the audience knows who you are. So like, give me give me the elevator pitch version of like who Dan Schwartz is. I'm the reason that everybody is here right now, listening to Dan talk. That's true. <laughs> you were my first ever real estate investor client. I didn't even know who real estate investors were before I met you. And so you are in my head, the platonic ideal real estate investor. Yeah. I'm like, all real estate investors are young. They all play in bands. They all travel <laughs> around the world. Uh, no, no, it didn't end up being that way. <laughs> None of that ended up tre- being true. Yeah. So background was in wholesaling and in 2011 or 2012, I was determined to figure out online. How can I actually use the internet to make more deals happen. And I found you on like Odesk or something, didn't I? Yeah, it was at Elance. It was still Elance. Cause I Elance. was because like, I was just testing doing PPC for clients. I was already I was doing like web design and SEO and stuff. And just like maybe I'll try something that actually makes people money more quickly. That sounds like yep. fun. Yeah. 
Yep. So I found him on Elance. We had one conversation. I'm like, this guy, this is a cool dude. Hang. <laughs> He understands the business. He's got 80, 20 systems mindset. I think we're going to go along. Basically him and I just hacked away at PPC for our investor carrot site. I think is that's what I was using. I might've been using some other site back then. Really that was like the, the impetus for AdWords nerds to branch out into the whole real estate investment because it, it is a formula and it's always changing and we kind of dialed it in. I was like the first guinea pig, if you will. But we got deals from it. Like we made a bunch of money. It was so early. And I, I think it was an interesting time too, because there were not, you know, one of the things that was exciting to me about it was when I went out to look at for other people doing it, there weren't really anybody. I mean, there was like Sean Terry was talking about AdWords, but very few people were really on that bandwagon even then, right? It's not that long ago. It seems weird now, but. So I was like really excited about the opportunity to do something new. And I specifically remember us having a conversation and, you know, I was like, okay, so like, tell me what a real estate investor does. And you're like, well, you know, I, I buy homes and then I, you know, I can turn around and sell them for more than I bought them for. And I was like, wow, you must, you must be loaded. You must have a ton of money on hand to buy multiple homes at once. And you're like, oh, I don't use any of my own money. And I was like, what? What the F is yeah. he talking about? Like, I just, I think on the phone, I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And in my head, I was like, what does that even mean? I don't understand any part of what that means. It was a really, it was a deep dive pretty early, which was pretty- the, the unfortunate truth of it is 99% of people that say they're real estate investors are just broke wholesalers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very true. There's a very sharp... 80-20 or, a, you know, Perry Marshall would say it's a 99-1 distribution of real estate investors, right? For sure. When did you kind of make the transition? Because you made a transition at some point away from kind of being a full-time wholesaler. You, you know, you you were always the kind of person that had a ton of systems in place. You, you really worked out that process. But you transitioned out of that into the kind of back-end world of things. So like what... what made that happen? Like what was the impetus behind that? Yeah. Building systems for other people. I think the impetus was me developing a self-awareness that I actually resisted systems and that I wasn't alone in that. I'm a more of a quick start and then figure it out later type of guy. But then I realized that the better systems I have, the more that my quick start skill set actually has leverage. I basically just realized that Putting in that front end work to build automation and develop processes and to recruit awesome people around you is the most important aspect of business. Nothing else matters other than building engines, not working in the engines. And I I had that revelation back then because I was on the road touring. It's one thing Dan and I have in common. Both musicians, when I was wholesaling more full time, I was also on the road. So I was forced to figure out how to. Like the only thing that I could actually, the only value I could provide is to figure out how to build the back end so that my team back at home, who wasn't on the road staying up till 4 a.m. every night, could actually get stuff done. So it was was circumstances and none of the existing solutions could help me do that. The only thing the existing solutions could do is help me like get more random like public data for leads. Nothing actually helped me manage the leads once they came in. It was, that was just a free-for-all of disparate systems, disorganization, and losing deals. I, I remember actually one day I was at the cafe right after a phone call with you. This, whole, this lead I called back said that he just sold it to the other wholesaler because I didn't get back to him in time. And it was in Canton, Baltimore. It was a beautiful neighborhood of Baltimore where I could have made 50K on that, which would have been a huge deal for me at that time. And that was the moment that I was just like, okay, I got to find something that actually works that I can, you know, trust the process to follow and then hand it off to my team. And that's when Podio came into my vision via Joe McCall. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. That's interesting. So let's, let's take a step back for a second. So like, I I think it still is mind blowing to, to people to think that, you know, at this time, like you were, 
a successful wholesaler, you're doing deals, right? But you're also like, you're out, like you said, you're touring. You're My impression of you is, you know, we're very similar in the sense that like, you're not the guy who's like, I'm just going to grind it out 24 hours a day, like hustle, 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 right? So what was the process for you to like even getting to that point? Like what, what, what helped you to develop that and figure that out in the beginning? Was it just like you had to, because you, you knew you wanted to play music at the same time and you didn't have any other choice. Was it that you had to, you know, you had to learn that the hard way, like what got you there? Uh, I was exposed to a couple books that sort of lit the fire in my brain. You know, the basic ones like the E-Myth, which I've still never read, by the way. Really? It, it's like it's like when people are like, Citizen Kane's the best movie of all time. And you're like, sure. And you just haven't seen it. And you're like, now I'm never going to see this. Like, this is just my personality. Like, I just, I don't know why. Yeah. It's like business systems for noobs. And then he paints a very lovely picture of this bakery, uh, this lady that runs a bakery. And, you know, she's about to lose her business. And then she started hiring people and making checklists and it changed her life. And then I read a book called work the system. So I kind of got started getting obsessed with this. And then I realized that no matter how complicated you think your business is, you can create systems around it. It can be broken down into its smallest parts. So other people can do stuff without you and you don't have to worry about them messing up too much. And also a big reason for that is my innate laziness. So I'm so lazy that I will go through hours and months of turmoil, struggle, and trial and error just to figure out how not to do something anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And that is a good skill set for an entrepreneur to have. Mm -hmm. So my laziness is my, my biggest strength. Yeah. I'm the same way, dude. I always say like, I'm, I'm like a low energy entrepreneur where I'm like, I can, I barely get out of bed every single day. Like it's a struggle. So I'm like, I better have something in place. You know what I mean? And, you know, ironically you end up, you end up getting sucked into it and spending like more time, you know, for me, I'm like, I'll spend three hours automating a thing that would have taken me five minutes, but I'm like, I just don't, I don't want to deal with it anymore. Okay. So you're like getting into systems, you know, you build out systems for your own business. You realize there's nothing there for an investors, right? So you jump into Podio and like, what was the plan always to make something for other investors to use? Were you, were you just like, I need a better thing for my own use? Yeah, it was, it was for my own use. So with Podio, it's a customizable interface where you can create different apps for different areas of your business. And an app is just a set of fields with little buttons that you can program in to do stuff. So it's like a customizable database. That's why investors liked it because you can change the words around, you can add buttons and you can add statuses and it's, you're not confined to whatever the software company gives you. So that was a kind of a new paradigm shift for the whole real estate business. So people flock to it and then they realize that they can actually automate stuff that happens inside of it by connecting it to this other system. And that is what I really geeked out on because I realized that you can do some powerful high leverage activities just with a couple little workflow hacks. So simple stuff, like I figured out for my own business, like I had no one else in mind for this, but I ended up creating like simple stuff, like how to generate a contract by clicking on generate contract inside of Podio. You program the button and then you do the if then workflow on Globy flow, which is the tool that automates Podio. If you click on this button, then it pulls all this data from other areas of Podio and then it generates a nice clean PDF. And then you can program it to email that to the seller using the email address in the seller field. So I just like got nerdy and just dug in to creating these systems so that I didn't have to do stuff like generating contracts and sending emails and stuff like that. And I remember being so proud of myself that I shared it online. And no one else was doing that. So that's the reality of it. Like I, I just I was just like, whoa, I just figured this stuff out. In three seconds. I shared it. People were like, you can contracts. That's just one example of the stuff you can do. And then I kind of got addicted to this validation I was getting from people. So I kept sharing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then it started a viral loop. People were watching these videos and I put my email in the info of the videos and then other people emailed me and said, just do this for me. I don't want to do any of this. You, it seems like you're, you figured this out. Just do this for me. At one point, someone just paid, just sent me a PayPal of thousand dollars without even talking to me. <laughs> just like, hey, just set this up for me. Okay. Thanks. Bye. And that's, <laughs> that's when I knew that I was, that was on something. Yeah. Well, that's the perfect example, right? Of like, man, you really validate your business idea when it wasn't even a business idea. It just people were like, I need to pay you to do the thing. Right. Um, and that's so cool, man. I, yeah, I, it, so we've talked about this before, but there's like a very special feeling when you're like, oh, I set up a system to do something really cool. And it just, you start to see it work and those pieces click into place. And it's like, man, that's so fun. Are you an investor who wants to dominate your local market? Do you want more leads and deals online? Then download your copy of the Motivated Seller Blueprint absolutely free at www.adwordsnerds.com slash gift. What are you waiting for? Go to www.adwordsnerds.com slash gift right now to get your copy of the Motivated Seller Blueprint. So that system that you were building, that became investor fees, right? So like, when did this become like an actual business? Because you guys are like, you guys have been, I mean, from the outside, at least, it seems like you guys have been growing a ton. Uh, more and more people like on our side, like people that we work with, use you guys or, you know, know who you are. And like, you, you've kind of made a real brand in that space from this idea of automating the back end. And I, I want to dig into a lot of like the specifics of that. But like, when did that finally crystallize and become like a real business? Well, first, it started with uh, a partnership with Joe McCall, where I basically did that service of installing all, all these automations and apps for people, uh, done for you, and then I just marketed that to his list. Pretty much, uh, I was in charge of fulfilling everything, and we had this partnership that put me on the map as a guy that knew how to systemize and, and outsource for real estate investing, specifically for that acquisitions part of the business, not the lead gen. Because that I was talking to people like you for that, but more of the um, you know running the acquisitions team. Um, so with that attention uh, backed onto myself and to Podio and the fact that like oh wow there's actually other solutions other than existing solutions to do this one thing that everybody hates, which is following up with leads. I basically said, listen, I, in order for me to do this right and scale it beyond, uh, you know, Joe McCall's constituents, I had to do it on my own. I had to, I had to set up my own system and I basically figured it out. So my, my goal all along was to create a recurring income business that could fund my ideal lifestyle. That was it. You know, I tried it with wholesaling. But with wholesaling, you're, it's deal to deal. It's very reliant on your negotiating prowess and your consistency with marketing. Um, I would still be doing that if I didn't stumble upon this automation thing. I figured out how to turn Podio into a monthly recurring income business. No one else had done it before, so I had to structure a deal with Podio. I hired some developers that essentially, when someone signs up for our service, they get added to this pre-populated, done-for-you workspace with everything already plugged into our API to automate stuff. So when I say automate stuff, the goal of the solutions I create is for investors to only just talk to motivated sellers and everything else is taken care of. And I'm talking about the data entry, the scheduling of the appointments, the follow-up communications, the notifications for when someone responds, the sending of the offers, Everything that happens between when a lead comes in from your website or your phone call to getting it under contract, it's the same no matter what real estate you're doing, whether you're flipping or you're wholesaling lease options or you're buying rentals. It's the same thing. So we figured out how to just productize it so it's the same on Podio. And then uh, that's when we launched InvestFuse version one. 
And two years later, two and a half years later, 500 plus companies. And now we're launching our own system off of Podio. So never would have thought in a million years that that was the path that I was going to take, but you can never, as the old Steve Jobs said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. Uh, but looking back, it makes total sense because I'm passionate about freedom. I'm passionate about figuring out how to craft a business around your ideal lifestyle that can give you time freedom to do the stuff that you actually want to do, like make music and be with your family and like be a human being that isn't just always talking on the phone with motivated sellers. Um, so that like that was the underlying the whole this whole journey has been a has been a learning experience and finding out what people actually want. Yeah. And trying to deliver that in the form of a real estate system. And I definitely want to come back to jumping off podio because I know you, this happened really recently for you guys. And that's a huge, I mean, for people that are non-technical, like that might, they might be like, oh, that's cool. But like, this is a huge, it's a huge thing. Like it blew my mind that you guys did this because there is a whole world of stuff in software development and, and all that stuff. So I definitely want to come back to that. So, but the thing that you said that I really love is like, you said, it's like all about figuring out what people really want. Right. So for you, like when you looked at investors and you look at the way that people use investor fuse now, right. What are the things that investor fuse does that are those things that are like highest leverage, highest impact, those things that like really make a difference. Um, the things that re really kind of really, really improve those investors businesses. Can I share my 80-20 cheat sheet chart? Yes, please. Anytime someone wants to share either a cheat sheet or a chart all at once, <laughs> uh, I'm into it. Um, that's right. right in my alley. This is the most popular free download of all time. So can you see it? Yes. Yeah. So if, if you guys are listening to the podcast here, he's showing this on the screen. We've got the Investor Fuse 8020 Task Cheat Sheet. If they Google this, can they find it? No, but I'll give you the link so you can download it. Okay, beautiful. All right. So like everybody, if you're if you're listening to the podcast, you want to see what Dan's talking about. This is this is really pretty awesome. So like just go, you can go to adwordsnerds.com slash podcast to find this episode. I'll put the link up for it. So explain to this what it is. So it says real estate investor 8020 task cheat sheet. So the question is, what is your time worth? And what activities are you doing? to bring value to your business. So I separated this out into four columns and I've actually since added words on top of each column. So essentially you gotta think of your day-to-day -day tasks in a dollar per hour uh, value. So I have four columns, $5 per hour, $100 per hour, $1,000 per hour, and then $10,000 per hour. And the different activities that go under each of these columns. So on the left two columns, these are more of your administrative and like tedious level work. And you can hire a VA to do most of this stuff. So on the left, I would say is admin. And then $100 an hour is more like just work, just general work stuff that requires you to be on your computer all day. Stuff like qualifying your leads. So answering all the incoming phones, posting your properties to Craigslist, cold calling prospects, editing and printing out contracts, managing the database itself, browsing Craigslist, stuffing envelopes, opting leads out from your database, like all that stuff is super, you know, it's necessary, but it's low level work that the owners of businesses should be doing. You then don't really you need over, any special knowledge to do any of that stuff. You can be that, exactly. that in 10 minutes and, and just get it done. Right. That's a good way to look at it as well. The higher dollar per hour, the more specialized your knowledge is. $100 per hour is more of your, you know, your worker. So they're going to do your analyzing the deals, writing the offers in the MLS, sending out letters of intent, ordering your direct mail requires a little bit more knowledge and skill and process behind that. Still, I encourage people to try to figure out how to remove themselves from these left two columns so that they can focus on the $1,000 and $10,000 per hour things. And our software helps people really hone in on these right two columns. And my, my vision is that if we really hone in our software to the point that like it truly does 
give people the confidence to only focus on this stuff, I wonder what type of trickle effects that'll have. I, I'm confident that it will actually dramatically increase the value of people's businesses and, and how much money they make in less time. Well, because not only are you able to get those tasks done more consistently, right? Because it's someone is that's their job. That's that's what they're doing to get it done, or the system get it gets it done every time, right? Yeah. But then you have mental bandwidth left over so that if you are doing a $1,000 per hour task or a $10,000 per hour task, you're, you're much more present, you're much more conscious, you're, you're, much, you're, you're better at actually getting it done. Yeah, and the best part of it is you don't need to spend as much time on that. So it's the 80-20 principle. That's why I call this the 80-20 task sheet. It's 20% of the activities you're doing generate 80% of the results that you desire. Or put it another way, a small vital few things create the most impact. And you need to develop an awareness around your day-to-day actions that are giving you the most impact. And leveraging technology and team to free up more time for you. And that's what it comes down to. So what's left is the high dollar per hour dollar per hour stuff like Negotiating major deals, thinking strategically, you know, maybe you want to launch a new markets, maybe you want to incorporate a new uh, monetization strategy or investing strategy, designing the systems themselves. That's a very high dollar per hour thing. Hiring rockstar team members and, and establishing the vision and the values of your, of your organization. That is essential because without vision or without a culture, your team has nothing really to work for. There's no meaning behind your business and therefore there's going to be very low output from your team. So I always like to, to, to stress the financial implications of, of making sure you have values in your company. It's super important and it's just more fun. <laughs> and then like education, like educating yourself, exercising. Like these are things that you might not consider the high value stuff that actually make you money, but they do. They actually do make you money and it helps you develop an awareness around the things that actually as a human being give you the capacity to create businesses that run without you. Um, Coaching people, meditating and thinking, evaluating your KPIs and determining ways to improve your metrics and, and just really being an owner of the system versus a cog in the machine. That's what it's all about. And, And every tool that we, design and build, we create it with this framework in mind. All right, REI Marketing Nerds, I hope you got a ton of value out of that interview with Dan Schwartz. Uh, Man, I had such a good time talking to that dude and uh, I learned so much every time we chat. As always, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. Uh, I would love it if you got some value out of this episode. If you go on iTunes or Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts, just give us a like, give us a subscribe, leave us a review. That helps other people find the podcast, and I really appreciate it. And as always, you can find me at the REI Marketing Nerds Facebook group. You can go to adwordsnerds.com slash group. It'll take you right there, adwordsnerds.com slash group. There's a whole bunch of people on Facebook talking about marketing, real estate investing, just really, really good group of people. And you can find show notes for this episode, links to everything that we talked about, all that good stuff, plus all our past episodes at adwordsnerds.com slash podcast. That's adwordsnerds.com slash podcast. I hope you are having an awesome week and I will be talking to you again soon. And uh, thank you. Cheers. This is the podcastfactory.com.